Well, a degree may no longer be key to getting a dream job. A recent report from Indeed found that education requirements are gradually disappearing from job postings. In January, less than one in five roles shared on Indeed's site required a four-year degree. Here with more on the report's findings and what it means for the broader labor market, we're joined by Corey Staley, Indeed Hiring Lab economist. Hey, Corey, so this is very interesting, right? Because some data points that you see say you need a college degree for almost everything. So how should we sort of interpret this? Yeah, this report was really interesting because we found that overall, over half of the jobs on Indeed's site don't have a college degree requirement. And what's most notable about that is that we've also seen a pretty significant pullback in the job postings that actually do have degree requirements. So if we look back a few years ago, over 20% of jobs had a bachelor's degree or above requirement, but that number has fallen now to closer to 17%. And so we started to see employers gradually take these types of degree requirements out of job postings, and rather they've been replacing it more with kind of some of the skills and things that they're looking for in these types of postings. And this formal education requirement, the fact that it's declining, Corey, is that is that more prevalent in some sectors than others, or, or no, it's really across most sectors at this point? It's been really across all sectors, but it has been most notable in the areas where education requirements have typically been the highest. You know, there's more opportunity to reduce requirements where those requirements have been higher, but it was really notable that we had over 80% of the sectors that we look at uh, reduce their requirements in the last few years. So it really has been pretty broad based in terms of employers pulling these types of requirements back to attract more workers into these jobs. Now, when it gets to be interview time, are they going to, you know, in other words, are they not putting these requirements in to just cast a wider net, but ultimately they're going to choose folks who have the degrees? That's such an important question. And some of the research um, that's been done um, otherwise has really shown that really it's a good first step to have these types of uh, educational requirements fall out of these job postings where it makes sense. But then there's still a piece of really the rubber meeting the road that has to happen. It's one thing for a company to say, we're going to remove degree requirements. It's a whole nother thing for the hiring managers in these jobs to actually make the decision to choose somebody who has the skills for the job, but not necessarily the formal education. Uh, and there are still so many jobs out there that really could have some of those requirements pulled back. Um, but there are you know, long standing kind of biases towards those types of candidates with education um, that will continue to have to watch in the coming years. And what skills, Corey, on, on your platform have you seen kind of a jump in, in demand for? Some of the biggest skills, unsurprisingly, given uh, everything we've heard over the last year, have been for generative AI skills. We've seen the number of job postings mentioning generative AI skills grow from pretty much zero last year to now being present in about one in every thousand jobs. So it's still a pretty small number of overall postings when we talk about one in a thousand. But when you consider that that was zero last year, um, we're really seeing a hockey stick style growth for those types of job postings. Beyond that though, um, uh, as we look outside of kind of the tech type skills that are typically talked about, there are still a lot of in-person type of skills that are really important that we see employers asking for um, around childcare and working in dentist office that are still really vital in the labor market today. Corey, what are the implications of what you're talking about for the jobs numbers that we're going to get on Friday? You know, it sounds like tightness is still feels like what's bleeding through from a lot of the comments that you're making here. That, that yeah, as we look back at, you know, January's numbers, we saw that 353,000 jobs added. So as we look towards the job numbers this coming week, um, a lot of that gain in January came from seasonal adjustments. Um, so it's likely that we'll see maybe a little bit of a decline there. The question is how big of a decline? Um, and as people start to look at those numbers, I think the thing that's important to remember here is that when we look at these education requirements being removed, one of the reasons that's happening is because the labor market has remained so resilient that employers have continue to try to find ways to attract workers. And so as we look at the job numbers on Friday, I imagine that you know even if the numbers fall, if we come in at 200,000 jobs as an example, that's still a really strong number and really well above what we need to keep unemployment constant.